Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank the witnesses. Um, as I'm sure has already been mentioned, uh, our forest communities are experiencing wildfires on catastrophic scales we've never seen before. In the state of Arizona, we've lost approximately 20% of our forest to wildfires over the last decade. And uh, today, our federal government frequently spends over $2 billion fighting forest fires in active years. And we have a rather striking comparison between what the White Mountain Apache tribe in northern Arizona was able to do with forest management following the Rodeo Chetiskai fire and the Wallow fire. Now, in the 2003 Rodeo Chetiskai fire, 60% of it occurred on the Fort Apache reservation. In the aftermath map, math of that fire, Congress passed laws, the Restoration Act, Tribal Forest Protection Act, and it changed how we manage our federal and tribal forests. In 2011, these new forest management techniques paid off during the 535,000 acre wallow fire, where less than 3% of the burn occurred on the Fort Apache Reservation. Now, in areas where the wall wallow fire did burn on the reservation, the tree death rate reached only 10%, and the surrounding non-Indian lands, 50%. Now, wouldn't you agree, Mr. Washburn, that this is a graphic example of two approaches to the issue? In other words, the White Mountain Apache were able to clear and were able to, uh, through a commercial enterprise, which maybe we'll mention a little bit later on, have a situation where a very small amount, many some years later, was burned, as opposed to the way that the non-Indian forest was managed, which the next time there was a fire, there was 50% uh, burn. Now, it seems to me, and I'd be glad to have your view, that this is a startling contrast between the approaches that were taken on Indian land and non-Indian land. Um, I'd like to hear from both of you. Senator McCain, um, you've long been a leader in self-governance for tribes, and that's, I think, a great example of where um, tribes, when they're given the, the resources and given them the ability to control, um, along with the BIA, can work really well together to address serious problems. And it's also a sim symbol of the importance of preventive work. And um, I think that that, that is, does represent great success. I think tribes do a really good job when um, we, uh, you know, put them in a leadership position to manage their lands. And um, together with the BIA, we've made great strides in Indian country to, um, to manage those well and, and put in prevention where we can. And forest clearing matters immensely as to the amount of damage that's done. We're going to have forest fires. And they're probably going to get in bigger. We're in the 13th year of a drought, as I calculate, in the Southwest. So it seems to me we have the example of vigorous clearing, uh, which was an example of tribal sovereignty, versus a very slow and hesitant process on non-Indian lands. And Mr. Hubbard, maybe I'm drawing the wrong conclusion there. Not at all. I think those two examples uh Wallow and Rodeo Chetiskai are good examples of well-managed, actively managed uh, tribal lands that uh, are more resilient to fire when it comes, uh, more resilient than most other lands, whether they be national forest system or private. That, uh, uh, that's, that's a good example. That's part of what we and try you, to do with the anchor forest and build on that. And you would agree that we can't do it just with government money. In other words, it, ha it has to be private enterprise. Uh, there's just not enough tax dollars to do all the clearing with just f a federal program that the real answer is to use companies that will go out and do the forest thinning and then sell that for proceeds and 
that way it's a free enterprise, uh, profit-making enterprise. Is that right? Would you agree with that, Mr. Hubbard? I absolutely agree. So right now we have up in Arizona because of the of another fire the that we now have these uh, companies are not telling us that they don't have enough NEPA ready acres to sustain their stewardship contracts. Are you hearing that? We're, we are hearing that. Uh, we know we've had discussions with the region to make sure we're addressing that. We don't want to lose the ground we gained with the Four Fry project. Well, we're hearing that there's a sense of urgency out there. Uh, Senator Flake and I met with Chief Ted Well uh, on this issue, which I'm sure you probably heard about. And I'd, I'd like for you to keep us up to date on that on that progress. Yes, sir. Because I think you would agree also that if these people go out of business, then no no commercial enterprise is going to is going to come back uh, to places like Sholo and and others where they are located. And by the way. The White Mountain uh, Apache um, um, has the largest uh, wood processing uh, facility in all of Arizona and maybe even the Southwest. I'm sure you're familiar with that, Mr. Washburn. Yes, I am, Senator. And it's been a success and a source of quite a bit of revenue for the tribe. And jobs. I think 145 tribal employees. So I guess my point is here, Mr. Chairman, is we have a situation where the Native Americans, thanks to tribal sovereignty, were able to move quickly forward after a devastating fire. I mean, it was huge. And set up a, uh, uh, a enterprise that is involved in forest clearing, that is making money, that is hiring employees. And Frankly, we've had fits and starts on the non-Indian land. And so the next time we had a fire, whereas only 3% of the Indian land was burned, we had 50% of the non-Indian land. Now there's something wrong with that picture. And now we have these fledgling uh, uh, companies that are in the business of sawmills and collecting some of this uh, fuel, and they're still having trouble getting amount of acreage released so that they can continue their operations. And it is of enough importance to all of us that uh, Senator Flake and I met with the forest chief the other day. But if you have any recommendations, Mr. Hubbard, as to what we can do legislatively, if anything, I would be more than eager to hear any recommendations you might have. And I hope you are giving this issue the priority and a little bit of the passion that I obviously feel about it. Is that true? That's true. You, you did get the chief's attention. That means we can expect immediate <laughs> action? I think you can expect action. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, thank you, Senator McCain. I appreciate the line of questions very much. You're spot on. 